So to me, it kind of goes back to like, I'm not sure because it was just Mac Walters and Casey Hudson at the end. I'm not sure even in the lead up to Endgame, they entirely knew what they wanted that to look like. Uh, something that I wanted to touch on uh, to Craig's question on like, what do you think about did Anderson die and stuff? I don't even know if those two, uh, uh, Walters and Hudson, if they knew whether they wanted Shepard to die because um, there were some um, lines recorded by, uh, oh man, I'm blanking on Anderson's voice actor name. Um, Keith as well David. as Keith David. Yes, Keith David, He's as well as him. Jennifer Hale. <laughs> yeah, oh man, he absolutely killed it. Um, but Keith David and Jennifer Hale, where there was a discussion on motherhood, where Anderson was asking like, do, have you ever considered being a mother? Mm -hmm. That's super weird and a really strange thing to get the voice actors to record if Shepard was going to die. Well, while we're kind of on that subject though, that conversation between Anderson and Shepard, do you guys think that conversation actually happened? Or do you um, think it's part of the Reaper manipulation? Or? Yeah, it's, it's such an interesting, um, it's such an interesting, I guess, question. I personally don't believe in the indoctrination theory, um, obviously because it's been debunked by the writers. So when I'm viewing that specific scene, um, even though it, it it obviously doesn't make any sense why Anderson's saying the walls are moving and, and all of that stuff and how did he get ahead of us, um, I just kind of chalk that down to, you know, the, the writing not being on point and stuff like that. Um, so when I view that final conversation, I, I mean, the first time I ever viewed it, I was extremely emotional. It felt like it was the one thing that they got extremely correct, mm -hmm. um, where it was just when Anderson tells Shepard that, you know, like I played Femme Shep, so the line is, you know, you've done good child. Um, it was just, it was so powerful. Um, so, and I would have preferred the conversation to, to, you know, my, my female shepherd to kind of go that route of talking about motherhood and talking about kids, just because that's kind of what I wanted my shepherd to, you know, end off on and have the happy ending. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, I kind of view that conversation as, as having happened and, and, and being true because it just, it, it felt like the one thing that Anderson is the. He's, he's either the first or the second voice you hear at the start of Mass Effect, right? With the conversation with Udina. Mm -hmm. um, so it just, it felt so right to have him there right at the end. And just kind of, yeah. just, just, just hammering home like, yeah, you did it, you know? Um, which is why everything that happens afterward, I kind of just ignore. Um, because that to me felt like a very solid place to end the series. Mm. I liked as well in that scene that, that Shepard wasn't alone, <laughs> you know, because... I really didn't want my shepherd either to survive or to die alone. You know what I mean? And and as you progress through, obviously, Mass Effect 3, like, shepherd, bless, like, does become traumatized through the war and seems to not isolate themselves, but, you know, they feel like they're alone. They're taking on the weight of the galaxy, you know, you know by themselves, and there's so much expectation and pressure on them. I really liked that scene with Anderson, um, and I would, I would like to think it existed, that it was a real thing. And Anderson, in my head canon, was a father figure uh, to my shepherd. You know, um, she looked up to him. He was like the dad that she didn't have. You know what I mean? And so, I, I got really emotional <laughs> at that scene. And even listening to that hidden sound by, I was like, oh, you know, kind of. I really did. So I like to think that Shepard wasn't alone in that, even though Shepard's an absolute badass and would have got the job done. You know whatever i've always believed that shepherd is so successful because he or she is not alone has never been alone you know has always had people standing with her whether that's other races friends her crew you know that so i really didn't want shepherd to be alone in that final moment you know um so i think even when you choose destroying you get flashes don't you of your crew and stuff like that um no, oh, it's making me emotional just talking about it. Um, but yes, I did like that that scene with Anderson. And I'd like to think it happened. I, I, I think it's the one thing that kind of made me not want the indoctrination to have started at that point, because I don't like to think that that moment was fake or anything. Mm -hmm. Like that moment between them was real. I like to believe that the real manipulation starts when he ascends to heaven or whatever you want to call that. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you.